welcome back to my channel mermaid nina here i thought i would do another disney world for beginners videos but this one is actually inspired by a couple of you a couple of you have written in and you want me to do a video about tipping especially tipping at disney world so here you go guys i thought i would do kind of a basic you know who do you tip at disney and how much who can't, that's right, can't tip at Disney? And then what if you encounter an amazing cast member who you wish you could tip but you can't? What other options are there out there for you so that you can support that awesome cast member? We are gonna talk about that all in this video. You guys excited? Let's get to it first. You know, like in life, you tip pretty much any kind of service worker, a service worker who comes to your house, does some service work for you, you know, hairdresser, stuff like that. That's who you kind of tip in the real world, right? Back at home. And at Disney, it gets kind of difficult to decide who do you tip and who don't you tip because most, if not all, cast members are in the service industry. They are providing some form of service. You know, they're helping you with your trip. They're giving you advice. They're making your vacation as magical as possible. And it gets to the point where you're like, who do I tip? And if I can tip this person, how much? So let's get into it. But first, before we break it down, I wanna let you guys know my little trick. And I have shown this before in my packing videos, but I actually go through this list that we're gonna discuss and I kind of guesstimate who I'm gonna encounter on my trip and kind of get all those ones and those fives out and ready. I actually get an envelope, I know I'm a little nerdy. I actually write it down on an envelope, you know, like bus driver, car driver, airport shuttle, bellhop, mousekeeping, whatever the situation is. And I kind of break down the ones and the fives, perhaps even more, and I put them all in this envelope so I know 100% to be sure I'm gonna have the correct cash for whatever situation I will be in. I even put money in here for like room service or if I have to call housekeeping specifically to bring something to me, which of course I don't know if I'm gonna encounter, but it's like a just in case, right? That way I'm not kind of like, oops, I wish I could tip you, but I ran out of fives. This way I always have enough. So that's just kind of a little tip for you guys, but let's break it down. So we're gonna basically start with the beginning of your trip and work our way through. So bus drivers, you basically tip any bus, shuttle, car, or Uber driver who would say drive you to and from the airport, perhaps drive you to and from the Disney property or even your resort. Basically anyone who is involved with suitcases, if they handle your suitcases or you have suitcases, any sort of driving situation like that, you're gonna tip them. But how much? So I'm gonna tell you guys based on my personal experience and of course I've done research because no one really wants to be in the situation where they're like, did I tip that person enough? You know, no one wants to be that person. But in general, this is how much you're gonna tip some form of car service driver that does indeed handle your suitcase or your suitcases are involved in the situation. You're gonna do one to $2 per bag or if you're a family, five to $10 for that family. So for like my family, we easily can give five to $10 depending on the situation as a tip. Now, this is slightly different if you do a private driver. We recently did private driver, a limo-like service, and they have in their fine print that their suggested tip is 20% of the bill. So it really just kind of breaks down to what type of service you are receiving to how much you would tip. But basically any airport, bus, shuttle, driver, I mean on Uber they give you suge you know suggested tipping. But if you're in a pinch, think one to two dollars per bag or five to ten dollars per family is the suggested recommended tip. Does that make sense? I'm hoping it does. Next, we're gonna move on, of course, because we finally got to our hotel. The next person we may or may not be involved in tipping is Bell Hop Services. 
and potentially a food delivery service, right? So, so basically anyone who's gonna touch your stuff, anyone who touches or houses or delivers your bags, your suitcases, your groceries, your food, whatever, that person you're also gonna tip. So same thing with like the bus drivers, the bellhop people, you're gonna tip them about one to $2 per bag or that five to $10 per family. We are a family of four. We have a good five plus bags and suitcases and backpacks and all that stuff. So we could easily tip Bellhop a good $10 if they are indeed taking all of our bags and bringing them up to our room. And this uh, you know, brings up a question that I have asked before. So let's say you arrive at your Disney hotel, your room is not ready. You have your bags because you just arrived. All you do is you walk your bags to Bellhop and all they do is check it in. Do you tip that person? And then later, once your room is ready, you get on the phone, you call Bellhop Services and you're like, hey, you know, we're here, room 102, please deliver our bags. And then Bellhop gathers all your bags, puts them on the little luggage carrier, right? And walks them down to your room, goes up the elevator and delivers your bags. Do you also then tip that person? The answer pretty much all around is yes, you would tip both people. So this is how it works in my head. The person who just checks in my bags, probably that one to $2 per bag is probably sufficient. The person who actually had to put all of the bags on the cart and is wheeling them down, who knows how big your resort is, to your room and then actually lifts the bags and kind of carries them into your room, that person, I'm thinking is more the, you know, the $10 range, just because they did a little bit more work. So that's kind of how I personally think about it. But yes, I would tip both people in that situation. So for food delivery, it's the same way. Now on Amazon, I'm usually ordering from Amazon. They have a section in there with an automatic tip and I just click, yep, five bucks, seven bucks, whatever. But I have also used uh, cast member services where tipping is per, you know, your discretion, in which case you could do the same kind of thing. You could tip five to $10, depending on how many groceries you ordered and how much they actually delivered. Or you could also do that 15 to 20% per the total of the bill. Again, really up to you. When it comes to tipping, a lot of these professions, they're just happy to get something, anything. But yes, I get it. We don't want to be the Scrooge of tipping, but yeah, in general, I'm like five to $10 for that bellhop situation again, because I'm a family and the same thing with Amazon food delivery. Hopefully you guys are with me. Next person you may or may not encounter is someone in the food and drink area of services. So obviously your bartender, right? That's a couple of dollars per drink food room service, right? You ordered food, they delivered the food to your room. You would tip that person. Any sit down waitress or waiter, again, just like at back home, how much would we tip these people? Well, again, if you just go up to the bartender and you're just grabbing one or two drinks, then maybe you just tip a couple of bucks per drink. But room service is typically a proportion of the bill, you know, just like you would tip any form of restaurant. So that 15 to 20% is, is pretty much the standard right now for uh, food services. So you would tip uh, room service, you know, 15 to 20% based on the total amount of your bill. The same thing with your sit down uh, restaurant, your waitress or your waiter, 15 to 20% or even higher, perhaps you're a generous and perhaps their service was amazing. I want to note that this also includes buffets. So there's always been a lot of question on I'm going to a restaurant and the waitress didn't really do much. She just brought my drinks because we're at a buffet. Yes, we still tip that person. I still tip that person the same amount as I would tip any other waitress or waiter based on the total amount of my bill. So that's just me personally, but yes, we they're hardworking people, guys. They just are, they're cast members, they're working hard, they're doing the best they can. I don't even think twice. I just give them the usual 
15 to 20 plus percent of the total cost of my bill. And room service is kind of different because it depends on, if you're on a Disney cruise ship, room service is complimentary, so I would tip that person a couple of bucks to $5 to bring my food. If the room service person is actually providing you with a bill, that's when you get that 15 to 20% off the total cost of the bill. Same thing with the bartender. If you're racking up a charge, right, you can tip, you know, based on the total percent of all the drinks that you've purchased, or if you're just kind of sitting there for your one margarita, then you know it's a couple of bucks per drink. So again, per your discretion, but these are the people you would indeed tip. Very similar to the people you would tip at home, right? You're tipping your food people and your bartender at home. You would tip those same people at Disney. So now more specifically like hotel staff. So mousekeeping or housekeeping, right? Uh, Mousekeeping is Disney's version of housekeeping and any sort of room delivery person, which is also kind of the housekeeping services. So how much do you tip these people? So it is customary if you are having the housekeeper come to your room every single day to tip a couple of dollars to five dollars per day. And you do want to tip daily because you don't know which cast member or which, you know, housekeeper is coming to your room because they have different shifts and sometimes they have a day off. So a lot of people not thinking about this will save all their money and tip one time at the bitter end. Meanwhile, two to three different people could have been cleaning your room all week. So try to do it per day. If that housekeeper is coming in every day, then try to do two to five dollars per day. However, if you're me, Disney has a section on the app where you can actually decline housekeeping. We do that. We do that per COVID and because of food allergies. I just have to be super careful that whoever comes into our room isn't bringing any allergens with them because my son is very sensitive to cross-contamination. So in our situation, housekeeping doesn't come to our room daily, um, pretty much ever. So we will tip 20 to $25 at the very end of our stay for that one person that actually came into our room. So we are a bit of a different situation, but in general, if housekeeping is coming daily, you wanna also tip daily. Now let's pretend you're in a situation where you need more towels. You, you know, you need a blow dryer. You need more Disney lotion, that's right. So you get on the phone, you call housekeeping and you request that someone delivers you something. Do you tip that person? Yes, yes you do, because they are delivering something to you. Even though you requested it, they are delivering something to you. So I'm in the like two to $5 range for that, depending on what they delivered. Did they have to carry up a giant microwave or did they just bring you a couple of towels and a box of tissue? So it just kind of depends on the level of service that you got and, and you know, however you're feeling in the moment. But I, I think a couple of bucks to $5 per you know, delivery situation is probably about standard. And the situation does come up where we're kind of in a maybe zone here, is what if you call and request a service worker who does some form of maintenance to your room? Do you tip that person? I'm asking you guys because I am like 50-50 on that. There was one time we had a heater situation. We were at the Polynesian in one of the new Moana rooms and the heater just wasn't quite working. It was super cold that trip and we just weren't getting the heat. So we called down, you know, and this lovely, lovely cast member came up. She was so sweet. She came up right away. She fixed it right away. She was super sweet and talkative and friendly and gave us a few tips and tricks, you know, regarding our trip. And yeah, I tipped her because she was amazing and she was sweet. Then there was a time uh, we were staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge and the TV set was in a foreign language and we could not get it to English. We just could not. No matter how many buttons we pressed and situations we did, we could not get that TV to English. So of course we called down and a TV maintenance guy came up like an hour or so later and tried to fiddle around with the TV set for which he couldn't fix it. He said he probably has to do some sort of reset you know, kind of behind the scenes. We weren't really sure. Uh, we forgot to tip that guy, which 
brings up the question, should we have tipped that guy? Or is it really per your discretion? So leave that for me in the comments because 100% I know if someone brings me up towels and you know things like that, I'm gonna tip that person. But if it's more of like a maintenance worker, do you tip that person? Let's say you call to have your shower fixed in the bathroom at your hotel and the maintenance worker comes while you're at the theme park. Do you leave them a tip just in case? This is where tipping can get a little bit tricky, a little bit sticky, and it's gonna be up to your discretion if you're gonna leave them a tip or not. But again, guys, leave it in the comments. And for other hotel workers, don't forget about the spa. If you're staying at a resort like uh, the Grand Floridian and you get some spa treatments done, a massage, a haircut, whatever, just note that you're gonna tip uh, based on the total cost of the bill, just like you would at home, just like you would tip you know, massage person at home, a uh, hairdresser at home. Now, the park. The park, I feel like, is where it gets really tricky. Who do you tip in the park? And eventually we're gonna get to who don't you tip in the theme park. So, who do you tip in the theme park? 100%, you're gonna tip your VIP tour guide. If you are one of the lucky folks who has, um, some cash on you, and you're able to score a VIP tour guide, which are seven, you know, several hundred dollars per hour with a minimum of six to seven hours. These uh, VIP tour guides work for you and your family and, you know, give you all their awesome services. You would indeed tip that person again, uh, you know, 15 to 20% off the total bill, which could be a several hundred dollar tip. That's right. The other people you would tip over at the theme parks is Harmony Barbershop, right? People who are cutting your hair, just like at home. And even the Bippity Boppity Boutique Fairy Godmothers are a tipping position. Uh, when my daughter did a Bippity Boppity, she got her hair done, she got her makeup done, she got her nails done. So I tipped our Fairy Godmother just like I would back home for anyone who does hair and nails. So again, 15 to 20 plus percent off the total bill for all those types of services. So that was my list of people that you would tip um, at Disney World and kind of, you know, how much. Again, think about what you would do at home and try to apply it to Disney World. But now it comes down to, okay, Nina, makes sense, but who don't you tip at Disney World? Or more specifically, who can't accept tips because I have been in several situations where I've encountered amazing cast members and I went to tip them and they could not accept it. They just cannot accept anything of monetary value. And again, if you are a cast member and you're watching this video and I got something wrong, please leave it in the comments and let us all know. But in general, um, the person you wouldn't really tip at a Disney is your park to resort bus driver. So all those buses that you wait for at your resort that is taking you from your resort to Magic Kingdom and then when you're at Magic Kingdom and you're going back to your resort, same thing with monorail drivers or even the ferry boat workers, it's not really people you uh, tip. You don't have to worry about tipping them because they are different from your airport driver or your airport shuttle bus driver, you know, someone where there's a suitcase involved. Of course, if you do call an Uber or a taxi to take you to the theme park, that's different. You would, of course, tip that person. But yes, uh, the lovely bus drivers who do take you from the park to your resort and back and forth, uh, those aren't necessary. Those aren't people that you tip. I have tried, actually. The other people that you wouldn't tip, but you might in general situations kind of back home, is guest services. So you can... Uh, you know, encounter guest services, not only at the theme park, but at your hotel. And I have, you know, had several situations where I needed to seek out guest services and they had to help me with my vacation and or resort stay. Uh, you don't really tip those people. Same thing with front desk workers. If you go to the front desk and you have a question about your trip and, you know, someone is helping you and looking up your reservation, you don't really slip them a 20 and hope for an upgrade, stuff like that. So you don't really tip front desk. And you don't really tip uh, park cast members in general. You know, the people who work on the rides or you know the people who wave at you when you walk down Main Street, all those lovely people don't um, accept tips. 
you wouldn't tip anyone at a quick service or a food court situation. So even though you would tip a sit down waitress or waiter, you wouldn't necessarily tip uh, the person who took your order at the quick service and sometimes maybe even brought you your tray in certain situations. That is not really a tipping position. And unfortunately, you can't even tip the chefs because I've tried multiple times to tip the food allergy chefs who custom make amazing meals for my family. So hopefully that kind of helps you guys on who you tip and who don't you tip and how much you would kind of tip. But this brings up the question, okay, Nina, I don't tip these people, but I want to. I want to because they're amazing. What can I do to show my appreciation? There's actually something you guys can do. So first of all, you know, you can bring something from home. I have seen several people gift cast members little trinkets from home, from their, you know, state or home situation. I've seen people give little gifts of love, little thoughts of thank yous. I've seen people give drawings and thank you cards and just little Disney trinkets. Things of kind of non-monetary value, not like a gift card. Just some little trinket of, you know, a thought, some thoughtful thing that says, thank you, I appreciate you. You can actually go to Etsy.com and they have several little trinkets, things designed for Disney cast members that you can pass out uh, for appreciation. I even found these super cute like thank you cards that you can just pass out when you um, encounter an awesome cast member. And a couple of years ago, back when they did the Disney World McDonald's toys, I don't know if you've seen that video, but we went from McDonald's to McDonald's to McDonald's and bought all the toys so that we could collect them all. But then it got to the point where we had several multiples and I didn't want to be hoarding all the McDonald's toys. All we were trying to do was get one full set. It was the Choo Choo Train one where each toy was a different ride at Disney World. I don't know if you guys remember these. So we had several extra and I didn't wanna be that person who was hoarding all the toys. So we decided that holiday season that we were gonna gift all the cast members that we saw during that trip, one of those toys. And we did. So for the several, you know, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway toys that we had, we gifted them to the actual cast members who worked at Mickey's Runaway Railway. Same thing with, you know, Tower of Terror and all those things. And I'll never forget it. We, we had this lady over at Tower of Terror, which I can't ride. So I'm walking over and I'm trying to find a nice sweet cast member. And so I see this, this, this cast member, she was super sweet, just kind of standing there. And she was part of like a rope drop where she was kind of helping guide people to the ride or away from the ride. And they kept dropping a rope anyway. So I started a conversation with her. She was super duper sweet. And we decided we were gonna gift her the Tower of Terror toy. Um, she almost cried. It was so sweet. She said it was the one toy she had been looking for. And of course she really wanted it because this was the ride she works at. And then as a thank you, which I was not expecting, she let us have like a backlot tour of Tower of Terror because I can't ride it. She had one of her friends escort me and my daughter through the Tower of Terror, the line and kind of all the, the fun, you know, things to look at and see. And they're, you know, he's giving us a tour of, you know, how they made Tower of Terror and all the special antiques that they had to find that they used to display. And, and we went all the way up and it, it was great. And it was, it was just her way to say thank you for me saying thank you to her for being a cast member. It was super sweet. And then we had another cast member over at the teacups. She was so confused. I'm trying to give her this teacup as a thank you. She was like, I, I think she was just in shock. She did not know what to do. So she took the teacup and kind of just tucked it in her pocket. And then we left. And like a half an hour later, my kids decided to actually ride the teacups. So we went and, and rode the teacups and I noticed her, she was still there. And her manager came up and she was asking permission from her manager to keep this teacup. And the manager just went on and on about how it was the best gift ever. And she started to cry. It was just so sweet. It was like she really wanted the teacup, but she didn't know if she could keep the teacup. And it was just, 
It was so sweet. So anyway, guys, any way you can give love and appreciation to these cast members, please do it. Please try. But if you don't have any trinkets planned, or perhaps you do, but you want to do another thing, this is what you can do, guys. It's 100, well, it's not new. Some of it's old, but there's one thing that's 100% new, and that is to give a cast compliment. So when you give an official cast compliment to these cast members, it actually helps boost their service record, which is key for earning raises or moving up the charts, right? To moving up the levels, it's giving them more gold stars and it helps them as they move along their Disney career. So how would you give these cast compliments? Well, there's actually a few ways and one really awesome new way. So of course what you can do is wait till you get home and this is what I did for years, is I would send an email to guest services uh, post trip, right? And talk about all the amazing cast members that I met along the way and what they did for my family and how I want them to get a little boost on their service record. Another option you can do is you can actually visit guest services at the theme parks and ask them uh, to leave a comment for a cast compliment. They actually will get out a piece of paper or they'll do it on the computer. They'll ask you all the questions and they'll type out a cast compliment for you and deliver it to you know the management, whoever needs to see that situation. So that's an option as well. You can also use hashtag, how do you hash, hashtag? <laughs> cast compliment on Twitter as well that's been huge for years but the new and most convenient way to do a cast compliment is actually on your app on the my Disney experience account you can leave a cast compliment that way you can literally do it the moment you encounter a cast member so as soon as you saw that cast member and you guys had a great conversation and they helped you out or they gave you extra fries or they had an amazing smile. I mean, whatever the situation is, you literally go on your app, right? You open your app, you go to the bottom three dash lines, you know, the dash lines on the right side, you scroll all the way down and you see cast compliment. You click on it and you follow the prompts. All you have to do is kind of fill out the generic how they helped you, you know, did they provide an excellent service? Did they help you with your stay? Did they solve a problem and you, you know, you filter through? Just make sure when you encounter that cast member that you pay attention to uh, their ID, their badge, and you figure out their name and hopefully where they're from, whether it's their country or their city. A lot of them are from Orlando, but some of them are from other countries and other situations. So try to pay attention to their cast member tag or ID because you'll use that when you do the cast compliment. So, you know, Sally from Orlando, Florida at Magic Kingdom, you know, Haunted Mansion, whatever. And you fill it out and you just press send. Instantly gives a cast compliment. Now this is huge, so make sure you try to remember all that info, name, you know, where they're located, stuff like that, and give them a cast compliment. This is again how they boost their career moving higher up the charts. This is helps them get better positions, a few more dollars, and all that great stuff. But yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys out. I I feel you. I even with all of my trips and all of my situations and experience and all that stuff, I still get myself into situations where, do I tip this person? How much do I tip? Do I need to tip? Like you just don't know. So I try to make it obvious with people, I know 100% you do tip them, but you know, I get it. No one wants to offend someone by giving the wrong amount. No one wants to be that tipping Scrooge, nor do you want to spend all day with kind of a weird feeling going, ooh, should we have tipped that person? Like, I feel bad. Should I have? I don't even know. Should I have? This is when you definitely can just go in, do cast compliment, because at least you did something. You did show some form of appreciation for that cast member. And again, for those of you who don't know, Disney's cast members are their employees. That's what they call their employees and their workers. They're called cast members. So 
Yes, hopefully this video helped you guys out and gave you a little insight in how you can show appreciation and love for those hardworking cast members over at Disney World and Disneyland and Disney Cruise Line. I mean, I, I don't just tip at Disney World, I tip everywhere. But yeah, hopefully this gave you guys some insight and showed you other ways to uh, show the love. But yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it helped you out. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications. Like this video and comment. Did you encounter an amazing cast member and you tipped them or gave them a cast compliment? Tell us about it. Or were you like Nina and you got yourself in a situation and you're like, ooh, should I have tipped that person? And then you feel kind of weird about it? So let me know. And also, if you are indeed a cast member and you know of a tipping position that I forgot to mention, please let us know because I want to make sure anyone who is in a tipping position does indeed get those tips to help them along the way. But as always, guys, mahalo for watching. Nina out. Bye, guys. Oh,